Hello, welcome to No Filter, a Nintendo podcast. I'm your host, Wizrad, and this is episode 5 being recorded on December 20th, 2017. By the time you guys are hearing this, it should be around Christmas Eve, so I just want to say Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Holidays. I hope you're all having a fantastic uh, weekend and week with your family and friends, you know, those you care about and those that care about you. This is, uh, you know, this is a special time of year where you should really take your time out Go see your family. Uh, give everybody a hug. Uh, cause don't you know? Don't want to sound too dire, but you don't know when the last time that you will, and you want to make the most of it, especially in this special uh, time of year like this. So again, Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you're spending it with your family and friends, and uh, you know what? Maybe get some good gaming time in there as well. I imagine a lot of us are off of work for the uh, for about a week around here, so hey, maybe get some good gaming time in too. So. Let's uh, let's get going into this podcast. So uh, the th- three segments I'm going to do in this podcast episode, it's not going to be typical. Um, it's basically going to be three different uh, topic segments that I came up with. First one is going to be about um, just Christmas time, uh, you know, the holidays and video games and my memories and what I kind of relate to Christmas uh, as far as video game wise. Um, the other is going to be about uh, a year in review, just everything that happened this year, mainly regarding the Switch, how uh, incredible this year has been. Um, and the final is going to be some predictions I have for 2018. So I have some uh, uh, logical predictions and some that are a little bit wild. So, uh, you know, I think that's going to be a fun segment and I hope you guys enjoy that. So let's get right into it here with uh, Christmas time. So growing up, this was my you know growing up when you don't have as much money you're not working your job or whatever it is you know this was the time that you would get video games almost for the whole year this um your birthday and if you save up some money from chores or something like that uh yeah this was the time of year that you'd get some video games and you can kind of use them and play them over the rest of the year um you know, I would ask for the video games as much as I can when I was growing up. Uh, I wasn't right into video games when I was very young. You know, very young, it was more about like the Lego sets and stuff like that, which was always fun. But, uh, you know, like a little bit later, probably when I was maybe like 12 or something like that, that's when I started asking for video games. And, uh, you know, it was always, I, rem- I remember it was always my grandpa. He would always be the one that would get me one of the video games because I think even back then my parents had the you know, the stigma of too much video games is really bad for your kid and stuff like that. So they, you know, more often than not, we're probably avoiding getting me video games or stuff. It would always be, you know, getting me like football stuff or something like that, which is, hey, that's great for me as well. But, uh, you know, it was always my grandpa would be the one. He's like, yeah, you know what? The, the, you know, he's going to get a GameCube game for this this year or something like that. Um, uh, yeah, other than that, though, uh, just the winter months. You know, uh, with the winter months and living in Canada here, at least, uh, I, I don't know, I can't get Christmas in like California and, and Florida and stuff like that. Like I have some family in Florida and stuff like that, but it's like, man, like having to have Christmas when it's like blistering hot out, no snow whatsoever. It just seems so awful to me. You know, like I, one of my favorite parts of Christmas time is, you know, the snow, uh, how cold it is outside. Then you come in and bundle up by a, whether by a fireplace or, you know, just bundle up in sweaters and have some like hot chocolate or anything like that. You know, that's, that's kind of like the feeling of, you know, the warmth of Christmas, I guess if it sounds a little like, uh, you know, uh, like a little bit of a metaphor or something like that. But, um, yeah, you know, like in the winter months, I would go play in the snow, you know, I'd play hockey, but then again, you come back into the warm house, and then you sit down, and you play video games for long hours, because you're not going outside too uh, for too long uh, in the snow, and too cold, so you come back in, your parents see that you're, you're all freezing from outside, and you're pretty much uh, home free to just do whatever the heck you want to do back then, you know, so even, even now, you know, like you're not going out as much when it's winter months, even just going to like pubs and stuff, you know, you go out probably a lot less in the winter months. And uh, so there's a lot of free time, I guess that you can say that's for gaming. So that's interesting. One, one thing I wanted to go back to uh, one of the memories I have um, was the first, I forget what Christmas this would have been, what year this was, how old I was, but uh, it was one of the first video games I would have got was a Game Boy Color and Pokemon Red. Um, This was uh, like a revelation to me. I remember I was playing the trading card game, I believe, before I got the game. Um, And then uh, when I got this game, I remember I went to the... uh, the, the room underneath our stairs at our uh, at my parents place 
And uh, I, I sat there and basically played that game all day in my little fort that I had down there. You know, I would uh, <laughs> I play that for the entire day all the way up until uh, Christmas dinner. Then I remember, you know, trying to go back down there to play. But then the parents would always be like, Derek, get your ass up here. <laughs> you know, Wizard, get, get, your, get your butt up here, you know. Um, so that, that was always a good memory. I remember getting that. And that was from my uh, grandpa as well. You know, he would be the one who'd get me the Game Boy Color and everything else with it. That was always a lot of fun. Another one was, uh, I was a little bit older and got GameCube with uh, Double Dash and Zelda, the special collector's edition that had like every Zelda game, including a demo of Wind Waker, I believe, which, uh, is my favorite Zelda game, by the way, Wind Waker. Um, yeah, no, that that was uh, that was something special there as well. Getting the GameCube, like that's the first console that I got as a gift just for me. The rest it was always sharing with my siblings. Um, other than the Game Boy Colors, obviously. Uh, yeah, so those are like two of the main memories I remember as far as video games relating to Christmas. It's obviously has to do with gifts and gifts and stuff like that. But you know, this time of year with the long winter months and stuff like that, I, I wonder what you guys do for this. But for me you know, around, you know, December through January and stuff, this is usually the time where I get going on the big RPG type games because I can sink more time into it and, uh, you know, really invest myself in these games and don't, you know, and, and put in long hours. So, you know, right now I'm playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which really does scratch that itch quite nicely. Um, another another thing I have to say about, you know, Christmas time is uh, um, uh, Boxing Day. So, again, I don't you know, I have some family in the States and stuff like that, but I don't think Boxing Day is a real big thing in the States. I feel like it is in like New York and stuff that's more northern, but you know, I, I wouldn't doubt it if a lot of people in like say Texas or something, you know, in the south of the uh, States probably don't even know what Boxing Day is, but it's basically like the Canadian version of Black Friday, whereas uh, the day after Christmas, the 26th, they have, you know, crazy deals on like every everything everywhere so that's usually where you get all your gift cards on christmas and then you go there and you pay you know 75 percent off for games or systems or tvs or you know what whatever it is so you know for it's been a tradition for the last probably 10 years my brother and i and my sister and uh, sometimes our cousins we'd meet up in the morning at like we'd get up at like 5 30 keep in mind this is after christmas so we're all exhausted but we get up at like 5 30 go to a best buy that opens at 6 a.m uh, or a future shop and, uh, the future shop is a former electronics retailer that was bought out by Best Buy. Um, and, uh, yeah, we would go there and we'd always get some good games, electronics, like earbuds, uh, systems. I think my brother got a good TV once. Uh, actually I remember he got one of the, uh, the, remember the Sony, uh, TV that came out when they were pushing the 3d implementation in, I guess, PS3. Um, or was it PS4? I think it was PS3. But yeah, it was like a 3D TV that came out and I think it was like for like 75 bucks or something on sale. And I remember that was like, you know, they always have the door crashers and stuff. And we got there early enough, waited in line there, not for too long because, you know, it's freezing cold and it's, you know, we're all exhausted. But he ended up getting one of them and that was a really cool thing to have. And yeah, like that's always a fun time. Then after we'd go to like McDonald's all the time, it's tradition, we'd get there at breakfast you know, the breakfast wraps and stuff like that for me and hash browns, all those are so good, you know, so I love that tradition. That's one of my favorite traditions. And it seems a little odd, you know, going to buy stuff right after Christmas when you like back then, especially when you'd actually get like, you know, gifts and stuff like that. Um, but you know, like, you know, if stuff's on sale, half the time you're getting gift cards anyway. So I think it's a, it's a really cool day and it's a, it's a fun tradition for us. Um, um, uh, another thing was it was always cool, like, you know, those weeks leading up to going back to school, um, that would be the first time you'd have like a larger selection of games to play because usually after Christmas and Boxing Day, you'd actually have more than one game that you can play next and you have to choose and pick between them. Like, am I going to play through this, that, do both at the same time? Um, yeah, and, you know, that was always interesting because how it was different for me though because how i had to do it was i have like say three games that i really wanted to play and i wanted for you know one for christmas so bad you know and uh then i just choose one i play through that one constantly just go right through that one and then i move on to the other i can never play two games at once 
you know so it was always interesting like that i thought that was a cool little tidbit to kind of bring up so you know I, i'd love to hear your guys thoughts and like what your memories are with christmas and video games or what your traditions are that have to do with video games or anything like that you know i'd love to hear that if you guys have any comments please let me know but uh yeah i think i've been talking about that for a little bit uh, long already so let's get going on to the next segment which is a uh, year in review so i'm actually going to start in the end of 2016 uh, where they revealed the Nintendo Switch with that uh, with that hyped reveal trailer in October, end of October there. So after that, there was a blackout of info, didn't really hear much else, but another announcement that came out end of 2016 was Nintendo's partnership with Universal Theme Park. So, you know, this, this was exciting, and I wanted to bring this point up as well um, regarding the Switch because I think the Switch has kind of shown a big switch, a big change in Nintendo's um, governing philosophies and really expanding and actually marketing their shit now <laughs> you know like it seemed like they were kind of resting on their laurels a little bit there with the ds the 3ds we we you especially barely any advertising whatsoever they can't sell their ip just by being the ip anymore you know they i think nintendo's aware or at least maybe their new management is aware that they have to sell they have to market you know it, it doesn't matter how great their games are you need some form of marketing to really push it and, uh, you know, so th this is one of the big steps I think they had was the Nintendo at Universal Theme Parks. So here's the real start. So in 2017, the first point and one probably my favorite thing or my favorite event in all of 2017 was the January uh, presentation. So, you know, if, this was huge, huge, huge when they announced it's coming up in early January. Everyone's freaking out. I was freaking out. And, uh. Yeah, it didn't disappoint. That was such a hype presentation. So it showed Zelda Breath of the Wild, one of the most epic trailers I've ever seen. It showed No More Heroes, which is like amazing. You know, like No More Heroes on Wii was one of my favorite games. And to see that Travis is coming back is fucking badass. <laughs> um, uh, they showed Shin Megami Tensei, one of my favorite uh, uh, series of games. Fucking love the, the Tensei games. Um showed arms a new ip with this interesting motion control and very cool character designs you know like this was really exciting um showing the hd rumble implementation and stuff like that you know th that was a very exciting thing for me splatoon fucking 2 you know splatoon was a major major hit not just in japan but in the states as well and uh and uh and canada and everywhere else uh europe as well i believe i believe it sold really well there too um yeah, like Splatoon 2, an, an announcement. I know everyone, after the hype trailer, the, the first uh, first reveal trailer, they showed Splatoon characters. Everyone was like, is this an expansion? Is this a, sec a sequel? And, you know, they confirmed it's the sequel, and that's pretty amazing. And they had a lot of other great announcements, some good third-party stuff and everything like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, then they dropped the bombshell again that, yes, 100% for sure, this is coming out in two months in March. In fact, March third not end of march march third so in less than two months you will be playing the nintendo switch and not just that but with zelda breath of the wild you know this was huge i remember after this presentation i would i would just look up all trailers reactions for weeks seriously just weeks of reactions to the zelda trailer to the odyssey trailer you know to to all this stuff here it was it was fantastic i loved that presentation and uh, yeah, so after that, they had the Fire Emblem Direct because they obviously announced uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They announced, sorry, that's my phone. Uh, they announced Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They announced Fire Emblem Warriors. And so yeah, they had the Fire Emblem Direct soon after to show a little bit more of the trailer and talk about Fire Emblem Warriors. Next, they had Nintendo Treehouse Live. So this was showing off all arms, platoon, um, you know, Zelda, but it also showed off like games like Bobberman or Ultra Street Fighter 4, I mean, sorry, Ultra Street Fighter 2, um, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and stuff like that, that was going to be hitting the Switch early on in its life, uh, you know, early on. And, you know, I, I, I love the tree houses. I love being able to look at that stuff for what games I don't want to get spoiled on. I go through like ARMS, for, for example, I watched every single one, you know, they showed off 1-2 Switch and all that kind of stuff too. After the treehouse is a Super Bowl commercial. When was the last time we had a Super Bowl com Super Bowl commercial for Nintendo? You know, this is another thing that really made everyone realize that hey, before even the system launched, Nintendo's putting some effort into marketing this shit. Something that 
if this was a Wii U, if, if this was, you know, five years ago or whatever, no way in hell would Nintendo be marketing that shit. They, they were just, I don't know what was wrong with them. But, uh, yeah, Super Bowl commercial, which was pretty cool. And it was mainly focused on Breath of the Wild, which is great, too. You know, seeing, you know, as, as much as, you know, the gaming landscape is huge on Zelda, and that's, you know, one of the most famous series, it's still not a mainstream type game. It's not a Mario game that you would see you know, commercials for absolutely everywhere, or merchandise crazy in the store and stuff like that. You know, you don't you don't get to see that. That Zelda has always been a little bit more of the inner circle of gamers kind of a thing. Um, yeah, so after that, um, after, actually, I think just a few days before the launch, uh, they had a Nindy showcase now too. So again, they, these are a lot of events leading up to the Switch's announcement. And this is in such a short amount of time, keep you in mind. You know, all these announcements here since the presentation was in two months, you know, within that two months of getting ready for the launch. So this Nindy showcase had, you know, Shovel Knight, Graceful Explosion Machine, Runner 3, Stardew Valley, Steam World Dig 2, you know, Blaster Master. You know, that was an awesome showcase. And I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to get this. Like, I love indie games. I, I don't even think we should call them indie games anymore because they're basically the du- new double A. You know, indie games have grown so much since like the Wii days and the PS3 days and stuff like that. That, yeah, this the Nindy showcase was great and I was like oh man being able to play all this stuff on the go as well <sighs> so good um yeah so throughout that two months uh, that those two months the other event I did want to bring up that isn't you know Nintendo strictly related but uh um again I was watching all the reaction videos but one of the things that really got me pumped was actually the YouTuber CND so uh, Captain Nintendo dude he waited outside the Nintendo New York store for a full month um, waiting for the switch with Triforce Johnson, uh, some famous uh, you know guy who would wait in lines for all the systems and get first system officially sold, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, like those those videos were great. You know, they really built and brought up the Nintendo community. Really had probably some good marketing for Nintendo and stuff, and just really got the hype levels like through the roof. It was really great series. I absolutely loved it. I remember I'd be. Uh, either even at work or just after work, I'd be like coming back and I'd be like, can't wait to see the new video that was posted for la- uh, for yesterday. And uh, yeah, so those were great leading up to launch. But now we get to the launch. So this is Epic, Zelda Breath of the Wild, um, the launch. Again, it was so damn good. But the other stuff that happened on the launch, a lot of the issues that were brought up actually. So some of these things were issues with the left Joy-Cons. You know, everyone was saying that there's some issues with it. Uh, you know, if you cover up a, cor- a corner of it, it loses its uh, uh, signal, I guess, with the system. I never had any trouble with that, but I also got one two months after launch, um, or two or three months after launch. Uh, the docks uh, scratching, again, I never, exp- I still haven't experienced anything like that. Um, I did have a, uh, a tempered glass screen protector on as soon as I got it, though, so maybe, maybe that's protecting it, but... I haven't noticed anything. Sometimes you'll see like smudge marks from it rubbing up against the bumpers or whatever. But again, I never had issues with that. And the third issue that was a big one was Wi-Fi, which I do have issues with. I don't know what it is, but it seems like maybe something's blocking the Wi-Fi transmitter or something in the switch. My Wi-Fi has never been that consistent and that great here. It could be part of my modem, you know, my my router as well. I do have to go replace it. It is a very old Rogers uh, uh, router here, but. Uh, yeah, so I think I might have some issues with that that I still have to address at some point, but, you know. Um, after launch, uh, there was a Nintendo Direct in April, so that was outlining games that were getting soon, mainly Splatoon 2 and ARMS, which which is great. You know, the fact that they were coming out so soon after launch as well was pretty great to see. Um, after that, Pokemon Direct. Uh, so this was right before the E3. This is... Uh, what was it like a week before E3 or something like that? And they they showed Pokemon Tournament for the Wii uh, from Wii U uh, getting ported over to the Switch, and then they showed the Pokemon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon games. And I know that the, I think there's quite a bit of backlash of saying, "Whoa, why nothing for Switch? What the hell?" So that leads us to Nintendo's E3 Spotlight, where um, yes, they announced that a full fledged Nint- uh, Pokemon RPG will be made for the Switch. The next um, Pokemon game is a Switch exclusive, which is uh, pretty significant you know that is a huge boom for everybody and sure they're doing the thing that i don't like that 
you know other companies always do that does it's not a very nintendo thing but i understand why they did it and i think they were smart for doing it here um but you know again announcing a game not even showing anything and then just you know we can expect it in like two years or something three years who knows um that's never a good thing in my opinion but uh i think i think they had to do it here with the backlash they received with the pokemon direct and, uh, you know, I think it really gave some more influence into the system and saying, hey, we're not giving up on it like we did with the Wii U. This is here to stay. Um, yeah, other than that, the E3 Spotlight, they had Xenoblade Chronicles 2 confirmed for 2017, which still in my mind is insane that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out this year, 2017. Like, for how, how we were used to Xenoblade Chronicles X waiting for like three years... You know, like, how insane is that to get Xenoblade Chronicles 2, another Xenoblade game, in 2017, not even a year after it was announced? Like, that it still baffles my mind. Um, but yeah, then they showed Odyssey coming out October. Holy moly, people. That was an awesome trailer as well with Jump Up Superstar. You know, here you go. Anyway, um, they showed the expansion pass for Breath of the Wild, which is really cool. Um, Kirby, Yoshi, Skyrim, Rocket League. Um, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which is awesome game. Oh, you know, there was a lot of backlash with it being there, and not gonna lie, I was kind of worried as well. I've never hated the Rabbids or anything. Um, Rabbids Go Home on Wii was awesome game. I love that game. Um, but, uh, you know, the Raving Rabbids, you know, and maybe tainting the Mario name, you know, uh, it turned out fucking amazing, and I, I absolutely love that game. Um, and what, what am I missing? Oh, yeah, by the way, Metroid Prime fucking 4. The most bullshit announcement. <laughs> Not because of what it is, but it's just like literally the most half-assed logo thing ever. It's almost like Nintendo was reading everyone's mind on the internet. Like, wow, you're limiting the amount of uh, time on your E3 spotlight. They They probably knew they needed to hit it out of the park. So they just like, okay, you, intern. Grab the fucking Metroid Prime logo, shift the Prime over a little bit, then add a 4 in there with some flair. <laughs> you know, a static image, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, it, leading up to it with the whole, uh, the S kind of forming out of the sky and stuff like that, or out of the stars, that was pretty cool. But yeah, no, the whole logo was just like, what the fuck is that? Uh, that was definitely a last minute thing, and uh, I think it worked as well. I think they did need to throw in something there. Um, with the announcement of the 2D one coming out 3DS, I feel like, yeah, they absolutely need to show that they are here for the Switch, and it is here to stay. They're not taking away, uh, you know, at least trying to avoid take away resources from the Switch and putting it on a dying console, which is a 3DS. So after that, uh, E3, actually during E3, they had the Splatoon Invitational, the Arms Invitational, and the Pokemon Tournament Invitational, which I love watching those. You know, Splatoon one was good, but the Arms one was really good with uh, Yabuki or whatever it is, the developer facing the winner after and just kicking his fucking ass, showing how much uh, strategy is in the Arms game. You know, that really sold me on Arms, and uh, it was a great game. Um after this, they had an announcement of the Nintendo World Championship. Yes, people. So the Nintendo World Championship coming out, uh, I forget what, was it November or maybe October? But uh, yeah, so that was the announcement. After that, they had the Nindy's Summer Showcase uh, and Nindy's at Night and, you know, kind of incorporated with PAX. You know, they had some awesome games here. Floor Kids, they had the, the trailer for Travis Strikes Again, which was awesome. Morphe's Law, which got a lot of hype. Battle Chef Brigade, which apparently is amazing. It's on my wish list. Um, Super Meat Boy Forever, which obviously, like, Super Meat Boy is fucking awesome. So getting the sequel, I think it's timed exclusive on Switch too, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, Wolverblade, other games like that. So, again, the Nindies are, I think over the whole year, everyone's realized that the Nindies are killing it on the Switch. They are, um, it is the best place to play them. And uh, again, I feel like all the developers are really going to flock to it because the games are selling a lot more on Switch too, even with the developers and publishers really fucking us over with some of the prices, uh, which will be a rant at some point later on. Um, the Nintendo Direct in September came up after that, which had, uh, you know, Xenoblade confirming December 1st. Holy fuck. Um, uh, the Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey, again, October 27th, Project Octopath Traveler with the demo. Wow, that game, I can't wait for that game, you know? If it's from the producers of Bravely Default, or if it's from all the exact creators, I don't know what it is, but Bravely Default series is one of my favorite RPG series, and, uh, 
yeah, man, Octopath Traveler, that demo was really good. And to think that a demo for an RPG like that actually is really good is something's weird with that. Like this, this game's either going to be absolutely amazing or there's something wrong with it. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's too stripped down or bare bones. I don't know what it is, but the demo for a fucking RPG like that was amazing, which you never hear. Um, yeah, it also showed Doom coming out to the Switch, which is awesome. Wolfenstein 2, L.A. Noir, you know, it showed some of these big Bethesda and Rockstar IPs. And to be honest, they, they're the biggest third parties out there, even though if they don't have, release as many games as the others, they're the ones that actually really matter. Um, maybe not for sales wise, but as far as quality of games, those are the those are the big ones. And uh, to see that they're get, that Nintendo's getting some of these games on the Switch, it's really it's really nice to see, but let's see where it goes in 2018 with uh, further support from them. We'll see. After this, they actually had the Nintendo World Championship, uh, which was fucking badass. It was it was a lot of hype for Odyssey. Exam, for example, you know, at the at the end of the World Championship with the Odyssey level, you know, I love these Nintendo World Championships. I'd love if they did this as an annual thing. You know, that was that was a big event. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to see. Um, uh, next thing I did want to bring up again, not as much of an event, but they had a jump up superstar commercial It's plastered everywhere. It had you know Mario dancing with real people You know it, it really showed that you know this game's gonna be crazy. You're not gonna expect a lot of these things uh, And you know that we're going all out with again advertising and pushing this switch and uh, Again with how you saw in my last podcast over 10 million sold uh, Before December hits which is again really fucking good um, and then I, uh, another thing was the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Direct, which I think it laid down a lot of people's concerns about the uh, voice acting, which by the way, the English voice acting, the English dub is really good. Uh, sure, they didn't lip sync it as well with the actual character models, but I think everyone's kind of used to that. But the actual voices in it are really good. Uh, you know, I'd say like a, a good solid 80% of the voices in the whole game, which there are a fucking ton um, are you know are really phenomenal really good um, but yeah so this one they, they announced that they're also going to have the Japanese uh, voices in it as well as a download pack and uh, you know again confirming December 1st and uh, the special edition with the pro controller all that good stuff uh, yeah that was that was an awesome direct and really sold a lot of people I feel that kind of got lost a little bit in the September direct so it's good to see and the final thing to bring up about Nintendo Switch in 2017 was the Game Awards 2017. So again, Nintendo had a huge presence there. Um, they won many categories, Zelda Game of the Year, and uh, they, you know, they showed off the Champions Ballad DLC Part Two, which they they're basically saying it's out now. God damn it, out now. Go buy this. You know, I love when they do stuff like that. It was a little bit weird. It re released on midnight, I think, but. Yeah, so that was really cool to see. I love when they have things like that. Or they, I remember like in one of the directs they had before, they had Box Boy, where they just said, "Oh, it's out now." It's like, wait, what? I can I can play this now. This game looks fucking awesome. You know, I love when companies do that. But uh, I think the biggest announcement at the Game Awards had to be Bayonetta one, two, and yes, a third Bayonetta game coming exclusively to the Switch. Fuck yeah, people. Fuck. Yeah, if you thought Nier was good, wait for this. I, I can't I can't actually say that because I don't know if I've never played Nier yet. But I will be playing it soon and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> but yeah, people, fucking Bayonetta is back. How awesome is that? So that is it for the recap of 2017. Some of my like, some of my general thoughts about the Switch's uh 2017 was, you know, it sold over 10 million units before December even hit. You know, like that's pretty insane, especially when you compare it to the Wii U's lifetime sales. It will likely pass that within its first year, which is pretty crazy to see. And, you know, hopefully it continues its momentum. Um, you know, hopefully Nintendo plays it smart. But uh, yeah, like that, how that is really good. I'd love to see Nintendo doing really well here. Um, you know, the whole year it was constant announcement, engagement and surprise, you know, constantly. There was never a month that they didn't have a new announcement or a few big games. You know, they constantly brought new stuff, new announcements, new trailers, new surprises. It was perfectly planned out, in my opinion, you know. Um, you know, they. the one other thing is they hit every single release date, you know. Like, 
I don't I don't recall a single game getting pushed out further than what it's supposed to be. You know, the fact that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 came out in 2017 is still baffling to me. You know, Zelda hit the March 3rd date as soon as, as exactly as they said. Mario came out when they said. Splatoon when they said. In fact, Mario, I think, was earlier. You know, Splatoon, ARMS, all these games, everything they announced came out on time, was not delayed, did not leave big gaps in the lineup. It was masterfully um organized you know and i feel like the whole last year the wii u 2016 where it really slowed down i feel like yeah they were preparing for this and they really wanted to hit it out of the park and honestly this is probably the best launch year for any system i've ever seen not just because of the games which are probably the best you'll ever see in a launch system probably ever going forward um but just how everything kind of came together especially considering its context you know of what's been surrounding uh, Nintendo as of late. You know, uh, third party, um, it, it started up, I, I think you see that there's some third party support there, but again, it's, people are looking up, you know, a little bit more optimistic here, but you know, the Wii U had a lot better third party support when it started off, you know, it had maybe not better games, but it had more of it. And, uh, you know, it got like the Deus Exes, the Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect, all that kind of stuff. You know, so, you know, third party can definitely get a little bit better. And what worries me going forward a little bit is that third party, you know, just jumping on now, they still might not be giving us new games or, you know, the most up to date games. So we still might be getting games like a year after the counterparts and they expect it to sell just as well. Um, it's kind of bullshit. And I'm hoping that's not what's going to happen. But, you know, again, as far as this year, you know, the games that it did get, pretty damn exciting very good to see but uh, let's see what they can do later um again this nintendo just seems a lot different than what we normally see from nintendo you know the stuff where they usually kind of trip over their own feet they really didn't do that much this year you know where it's like they see you see potential and then they just oh by the way we're gonna remove this now or sorry you can't actually speak online to people or you know it always seems like there's something that they hindered themselves on but this this whole year it seems like they were just hitting it out of the park almost every single time um they're getting better you know and hopefully they can still keep improving on it um their trailer game was on fucking point you know like their trailers were insane so hype like so many trailers zelda odyssey the xenoblade one you know uh, arms was a really good trailer arms was oh really good splatoon trailer that first trailer for splatoon 2 oh so good you know they had a lot of really good trailers you know coming out of this year as well and uh uh i, I guess the amount of games that came out this year was kind of ridiculous as well but it's not just the the quantity it was the quality of each one i don't think there was a single game that was that was released at least from nintendo that wasn't exceeding expectations from what people had beforehand you know like the quality was ridiculous um they they were just knocking it out of the park and uh you know like just to kind of overall again i really like you know koizumi in this kind of role here you know i like that they're bringing in some of the i know he's been with nintendo for a while but they're really bringing up the young talent of nintendo and they're taking it over now you know like as much as we all love Miyamoto and how much of a genius he still is in his games, you know, getting fresh blood in there is always important. And as long as he is imparting his, uh, you know, his wisdom, his intelligence, his experience to his younger developers to make sure that they know how to design a game, you know, like the important aspects of it, not just like the technical aspects of it. I think Nintendo is in a good spot and, you know, all these younger developers learning from living legends like Miyamoto, you know, and Iwata back then and stuff, you know, I, I have very good, um, you know, a good anticipation for the rest of, uh, the next few years of what Nintendo can bring up. Um, and yeah, Kimishima, you know, uh, bringing out the thickness and all the, uh, the, the, the booty shots, you know, <laughs> twin tells and the, you know, the Zeldas and <laughs> everything like that. Yeah. He's kind of, everyone's kind of making him like a meme, but, uh, you know, I feel like this guy knows what he's doing here. They're, they're sticking to their guns a lot. They're basing a lot off of what Iwata was definitely leading toward, but I feel like he's throwing in some of his own ideas for them making money as well as saying, Hey, you got to spend money to make money. And I think they're finally spending some money. So, again, Nintendo, congratulations. You know, fantastic job this year. Uh, I 
do not see 2018 topping this year. In fact, I don't see many years topping this year, which is insane because it is a launch year. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, again, Nintendo, great job. And now for my 2018 predictions. So yeah, these aren't in any particular order or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I have a list of different predictions here. Some are a little more crazy and some of them are more, you know, down to earth what I actually think will happen. Um, but yeah, let's just get started here. So first one, uh, Smash Bros. I think it's going to be a brand new game. It's going to be headed by Namco Bandai, executive producer um, uh, Sakurai, but I feel like he's going to try to pass the torch down to someone else, and I feel like that's what they should do, get some fresh blood in on Smash Bros. Just let have him in a, a executive role. And uh, yeah, so... Smash Bros. brand new game, not a remake or a port of the Wii U version. I'm sure there'll be some assets and stuff that will be um, reused, but most of it will be absolutely brand new. You know, it's been over three years since its release. I feel like they would have commissioned Bandai and Namco to go right into it again. And uh, yeah, so I think that'll be coming out in the January Direct. Yes, there will be a January Direct and um, it will release holiday 2018. You know, they're going to, because I feel like 2018 won't be as packed as 2017, I feel like what they're going to do is fill up a lot of the hype and keep the hype going by announcing it in January 2017, maybe a new character, and then throughout 2018, especially E3, they will really start hyping up new characters, new modes, new new Smash Bros, you know? Um, so that's what they'll be doing for the extent of 2018. I feel like Smash Bros. will be the big game that they lead up to, much like our Odyssey was for the whole 2017, um, and obviously Breath of the Wild with the expansions. Next prediction, uh, virtual console and online. So there is not going to be a separate virtual console. There, I feel like they have enough indie support. They don't want to take away from the eShop sales of those games. And I think they're totally right to do that. I say fuck Virtual Console. What they will do, though, is they're going to have this Virtual Console online thing. You know, it, I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to be kind of received rather poorly. It will be cheaper. You know, I'm going to probably end up buying it. But, you know, I really want to see some more online games for it. Because really all I'm playing is like Rocket League and Splatoon 2 and Doom sometimes. Other than that, there's not too many online games that I'm playing, at least. Um... Yeah, I, I also feel like this virtual console thing will include GameCube games. I feel like that's going to be one of the bigger selling points that they'll have. Hopefully it's not just the, you know, uh, you know, just online incorporation of these 2D, you know, NES games and stuff like that. I want to see some full GameCube games that might be part of the virtual console service. So that's my next prediction. Another one is Super Mario Odyssey. There will be DLC revealed in January. DLC will have three new levels to explore, and it'll add further revisions to the existing levels. So much like how they had the, uh, whatever that cube was, it ex exploded and revealed like 30 new moons in each level or whatever it was. I feel like, yeah, they're going to add another one of those or another version of those and uh, expand on the already existing worlds even further, which I think would be a great idea. In fact, they might just do that for everything, but... I feel like, yeah, they will add in some brand new levels. And uh, if it's three new levels in that, yeah, that's like a full-out uh, um, Odyssey DLC. And I feel like that's what they're going to do. Um, you know, they had the whole year building up Breath of the Wild with the DLC and everything like that. I feel like Odyssey kind of got a little bit short-changed. It, it was definitely a lot of hype leading up to it. But, you know, it's also lost all these Game of the Years to Zelda. I feel like, yeah, they need to push Odyssey for a lot next year as well. Uh, next prediction is Animal Crossing. Um, so yeah, they'll have an E3 reveal for Animal Crossing with an October release and they'll have, you know, a special Halloween event thing. You know, Pocket Camp has kind of made me concerned about this, but I still, I still vehemently think that they will have an Animal Crossing game on Switch and soon. Um, you know, I, if they really want to pack 2018 as well, I feel like having an Animal Crossing in there, especially around fall time, I feel like that would be the best way to go with Animal Crossing. So we'll see if that, that if that works out. Um, next is uh, um, E3. I, th I feel like what they will do is they'll focus mainly on Smash Bros. as one of the bigger kind of event things. They'll have a, a you know a tournament and all that kind of stuff. But the E3 will be almost entirely focused on the Retro Studios game. 
you know, a lot of people for the last, like, what, three years they've been pushing for this. But I feel like Retro Studios is going to have a big, big game here. You know, it's going to be, I'm, you know, I don't think it'll be exactly how this is, but I feel like this is going to be Nintendo's destiny kind of a thing, you know? Uh, online, cooperative, big mix, whether it's just an adventure game, whatever it is, I feel like that's what Retro Studios game is going to be. And for E3, they're going to have a major focus on this. Which is interesting because it's not a Nintendo Japan, you know, game. But I feel like, you know what, Nintendo of America will understand that Retro Studios holds a lot of weight. Their game will likely look fantastic. And I feel like, yeah, that's what they're going to do. You know, that's a big that's a big prediction. But you know what? I think it's fucking time by now, Nintendo. You know, show this game off. <laughs> so again, I think that's going to be at E3. Huge announcement. And uh, Animal Crossing will be there as well as a big announcement with E3. Um, third party ports. So yeah, again, I think the ports are still going to be coming if they did just, you know, if they did just really start working on them in like summer 2017 or, you know, or, you know, spring 2017, you, you're, we're not going to see a lot of these bigger games until 2019 if they are even coming out. So I feel like a lot of these games are going to be ports of games that have recently come out on uh, the other systems. And I think that will continue through 2018, maybe a few exclusive newer ones, mainly from Japanese developers, but you know, um, yeah, that's that's one. Another one is uh, we will not see a Metroid. Well, 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 no, sorry, we will not see Metroid Prime Four um, this year. You know, I, I feel like they're just going because of Retro Studios and some of these other games coming out. I feel like they won't even show a teaser for it. That that teaser, I think, might be like an early, like a January twenty nineteen thing. Um, some people will be upset about it, but fuck off people you know they showed you like a shitty logo before the game is probably barely started you know so uh, they could put together a teaser just if they feel like they're not going to do that well with the hype factor at e3 i feel like nintendo understands they need something good for that now but uh yeah you know what they're not going to show that but i think that we also won't see much or at least anything for pokemon we might hear details about what they're doing with the game but i feel like with pokemon they never usually announce them like years in advance or anything like that right like you know that a game's coming out they might give you it's going to be pokemon uh pokemon watermelon or something i don't know whatever but it'll be a new pokemon name but you won't see like anything you might see one uh one new pokemon or the th starting three but i don't think you're gonna see much else from that you know about the game um um uh gta 5 i feel like that will get a uh, announced for the switch and probably a fall release uh, or maybe a late summer release um, maybe they'll announce that in e3 and it'll be released maybe two months later in like september or august maybe um unlike okay so this is this is maybe wishful thinking here but how i've been seeing nintendo in 2018 is i feel like it's really going to slow down with how from how 2017 is but I feel like Nintendo is still going to pace the year well. You know, they will have constant releases, big name games, and, uh, you know, it's unlike what we're used to. You know, it, I think they're going to continue um, from 2017 just maybe without the megaton announcements of, like, the Odysseys and the Zeldas, but they'll have games like, you know, the Fire Emblems or, you know, other games like that, you know, Animal Crossing, stuff like that, that aren't maybe not as resonant with people, but they are big games to have that will continue to push the fan base um, I feel like they'll have a brand new IP that's a story-based like adventure. I feel like Nintendo's really trying to expand. So I feel like, yeah, Nintendo themselves in-house will have a story-based uh, action-adventure type game. You know, very heavy in story. So hopefully we see something like that. I think that'd be really cool to see Nintendo's take on this. Because we see a lot of, you know, the Western developers go for these heavy story-driven games. But let's see how a Japanese developer like Nintendo can take it. Um... I feel like they're going to have a new game that focuses entirely on the HD rumble, not like a, you know, a one two switch thing, but maybe a pilot wings or an F zero game that has a big emphasis on the HD rumble, which I hope to God happens because I fucking love the HD rumble. I'm playing mutant muds collection right now, man, the HD rumble is so good in it. Some of these games are so good with HD rumble. And like, you really notice it when you go to other games and you know, like play, say you play a PS4, use their controller Man, the rumble is so much better in the Joy Cons and the Pro Controller, you know, um, if it's if it's programmed correctly. Um, so I'm really hoping they do something like that, and I feel like they will. You know, uh, 
they've probably been thinking about that for a while. It probably just took time. Um, and I think there will be the final crazy thing that I'm going to bring up here. I think there will be a brand new Zelda game announced. It won't come out 2018. It'll come out early 2019. But yes, I feel like there will be a brand new Zelda game already. Yes. And this will be a 2D top-down co-op able split Joy-Con type game. Um, I don't think they want to go the Triforce Heroes route where it's wholly dependent on the co-op, but I feel like it'll be like a, if you want to jump in and help out with the adventure, yeah, you can jump in, you'll be Link's ghost or something, or you'll be his sidekick. But it's still a full-out 2D top-down game like Link Between Worlds, and it'll have a brand new gorgeous artistic art style, and it will have a holiday release. Or, sorry, a, a, a winter release in 2019. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so those are all my predictions for 2018. You know, there's quite a few there. Some kind of crazy ones, but for some reason, I feel like that Zelda thing has a chance. You know, I feel like that has a legitimate chance. Because I know that Zelda team is split up amongst two different teams, I think. One that usually did the 3DS games and one that does the uh, other games. And 3DS, you know, the Triforce Heroes came out a while ago and probably didn't take up too many people. So I feel like, you know, they, they're aware that they need to better this, you know, like five-year release cycle on home consoles for Zelda. I feel like this is an option here and it would be perfect with portable and they can, you know, they love to push their local multiplayer split Joy-Con thing. And I think this is the option here, so... So yeah, that is the end of No Filter Nintendo Podcast, Episode 5. Leave in the comments what your favorite moments of this year were, what your predictions are for 2018, and uh, you know, I'd like to see some of your Christmas video game memories as well, you know? Um, it's, you know, it's a holiday season, let's get some joyous uh, talk going down in the comments, you know, that'd be, that'd be great to see. And again, you know, happy holidays everybody, Merry Christmas, I hope you guys all have a great time with your friends and family, and I will see you guys in the new year.